Hello and welcome to Chinivision. This time, we're off to the circus. Finish Freddy's Big Top of Fun was a 1989 game by Mindscape, initially launched on the 16-bit. Today, we look at the Amiga, Amstrad, Spectrum and Commodore 64 versions. Couldn't get the ST version working, and my Amstrad PC, the spec is way below what's needed for this. Starting off on the Amiga, and I saw this game reviewed in computer and video games on the ST and Amiga. Looked at the screenshots, and it was the first 16-bit game I'd ever seen that I went, wow, that's something I want to own. I'd never really seen anything else that gave me that impression. And I, I recall the review hinted that there was no chance of an 8-bit version, so it was a surprise when I saw one advertised and actually bought it for my Amstrad CPC in my local software shop. Hadn't seen the review, but it was that or Rainbow Islands, and uh, I bought this. So the plot of the game is you have to save the circus from being developed. You owe a bad businessman, a corrupt businessman, a load of money, $10,000. And it's due tonight, as it says on here. So you've got to put on six acts to raise the money in front of some judges to raise the £10,000. Or dollars, rather. But there's a complication because the businessman who you owe the money to has sent along Fiendish Freddy, who's a evil clown who's going to mess things up for you. And here he is, Fiendish Freddy. Absolutely beautiful animation. And just looking at this on the Amstrad version, which is the version I had. And it's lovely large graphics. Yes, you don't have the same frames of animation on the 8-bit or the Spectrum here either. But it's still the full atmosphere, certainly on the Amstrad. C64 version is very smooth, but some weird choices of colours. It's slightly odd in places. So back to the Amiga, and you can play up to five players. I'm not against each other, you all take turns. Lovely intro screen here. With all the animations going on, the crowd jostling away, and your little man there smoking his cigar. And on the Amstrad, very, very similar, and you've got all the animations. You can also practice any of the events as well and you choose which character you want to be here on the spectrum slightly cropped down screen don't know why and on the c64 looking more like the amstrad version and you can choose which animal you want to represent you when you play the game i'm usually the tiger with the cocktail glass the game is full of humor and as you can see the ring master's trousers fall down there and yes there is a lot of disc swapping not on the commodore version though because although i'm playing this from a disc image that's in fact hacked i believe uh, it originally came on cartridge although it may have been available in the usa on disc only come to think of it first event is high diving first of the six you jump from three progressively higher platforms perform the moves requested if you get it wrong uh, or you don't do it rather you get blown off course by finish freddy and you have to hit the target at the end which gets progressively smaller a little bit of late waiting around on the Amiga while the disc loads up. It's running on Amiga 600 with GoTech Drive. And we jump. We wiggle the joystick left to right. It doesn't have to be really fast. And then you pull the manoeuvre you need, which you need to get from the manual. So you, you really do need the manual to tell you which direction to pull. When the bell rings, you have to perform the manoeuvre, or Phoenix Freddy will come onto the screen on his, uh, it's not a jetpack, but a fan thing, to blow you off course. Level one, fairly easy. Onto the Amstrad. And gameplay-wise, it's identical. The only difference is the slightly more crude graphics, but it's a very good replication of the 16-bit version. Over the spectrum is monochromatic. Slightly faster, though. And this time we're jumping from platform two into a bucket of water. And you can see Freddy coming on the screen there just then. 
There you go, here he comes. And if you don't perform the right thing, he will blow you off course. And we're going to miss, aren't we? We're going to miss. Over the C64. On platform two again. The animation is better on the C64. That's the sudden appearance of Fiendish Freddy there. It's weird, it lacks colour almost, and then when the colours are there, it, they seem to be poorly chosen. At the end of each event, you get judged by a panel of judges, and they award you money, and you get a different animation depending on how well you did. So we have got $1,260, or pounds. $1,260. Which isn't enough. You need to be getting far more than that. You need to be getting two thousand dollars per event, really, I guess, or just under. Judging on all the versions, the Amstrad version looking really nice here. On the Amstrad version, the middle clown doesn't do anything, and different graphics on the Spectrum again, but very similar on the C sixty four, with a middle clown who doesn't do anything. Second level is juggling, and we're back on the Amiga. And Fiendish Freddy will throw things in like bombs from the side of the screen that you need to get rid of or juggle with. So you can drop up to five objects per level, the clock counts down. Fiendish Freddy distracts the seal on the right hand side. He's going to throw a bomb in now. What you have to do is toss that away by pressing up. You juggle with it, the next time you catch it, it will explode. A few more seconds to go, about 10 seconds to go, something like that. 13. Dropping lots, can I drop one more thing? Freddy's about to throw something else on. We should get away with it. Or he's going to throw a rocket thing on. And these you have to juggle, you can't throw back at him. Level one complete. Three levels in all. And now we get more difficulties like bowling balls being thrown in, and knives. Freddy's there again, he's going to throw in this rocket thing. I have to juggle that. I can't throw it back at him. So whatever I do, I mustn't drop that at any cost. Everything else I can drop, but I mustn't drop. Oh, I've dropped it. And it will chase you, and you die. Lovely death animation. Finish Freddy is a game with a really dark sense of humour. Over to the Amstrad. A little bit slower. Still really well presented though. And there's not much to it really, you just have to move around and go left to right and press fire or up to get rid of the bombs that you don't want. So Freddy's gonna throw something on, here comes the bomb. Was get tricky because there's two things very close to each other. Luckily, I caught the bomb. I can toss that off the screen. The bang that means it's uh, I've dealt with it. And yes, from level two onwards, babies are thrown into the mix. And what you have to do to get rid of them is throw them into a passing pram. Really, yes. So there's a pram there that appears about the time you'll catch the baby. Hopefully. If I've got this right, and I haven't played the game for years, that should drop in. Yes, did it. Ten seconds to go. Oh, yeah, it's really nice. It's, it's a little bit slower here on the Amstrad, but not, not to its detriment. There we go. I love that little animation at the end with the fingers in the air and the music. Nicer music on the Amstrad than the Amiga for that little sequence as well, I think. Over to the Spectrum. Fiendish Freddy looks a bit weird on the Spectrum. Or the character of Fiendish Freddy. 
doesn't look like the other versions. More fluid than the abstract though, but again, a smaller screen. It's not a case where the abstract and the spectrum are using the same graphics. It looks like the spectrum graphics have... Oh, I've gone horribly wrong there. Like spectrum graphics have been drawn wholly new, whereas perhaps the Amstrad and C64 have been ported from the 16-bit versions and converted. Because again, the C64 version here looks very similar to the Amstrad version. It's more muted colours. Three objects. I, I, that's the trouble. You, can, you can't go further left there. So if you get two objects coming down at the same place, all that happens. Actually, no, I caught that, but I wasn't expecting to. Oh, no. Oh, no. Bang. Next level is the trapeze, and we're back on the Amiga. Again, three levels. Swing from uh, swing to swing. And... Uh, also, you've got it must be too slow, otherwise Phoenix Freddy will... Oh, nice animation. Otherwise, Phoenix Freddy will fly along on his jetpack thing, cut the trapeze with a pair of scissors. Scissors. And here on the Amstrad, a bit slower. Watch the band at the bottom. That, that thing down the bottom is the band, or in the middle of the screen, the background. If they get too far to the left, that's when Phoenix Freddy will come chasing after you. And jump. Am I going to miss it? Am I going to miss it? Oh! And even here on the Amstrad, there's little things like an elephant squirting water down at the bottom left there, which is a nice touch. You've just got to time this right. This, this, this is not easy, and it's good that you can practice all these events independently. Jump. And there we go. This time I have to jump through a hoop thing. It's easy to get distracted by a little animation of the... Elephant squirting its trainer down there. Oh, ho, oh, oh. ho. Only criticism on the Amstrad is that perhaps it's a little bit too slow on this level. Let's add more of the speed of the Spectrum version here. And that. Don't get the band on the Spectrum version either. You just, it's a little animation of something running right to left at the bottom there to indicate what's going on, but it's not a band. What is it? I can't see any guesses in the comments what that thing flailing around is. Oh dear. You don't get the death animations on the Spectrum and Amstrad version. Much faster on the C64. And again, same thing on the uh, C64 here. No band. But you've got something flailing around there in the middle, but you do get the death animation. That's worth mentioning about Phoenix Freddy, the multi-load. Don't even attempt to play this off of tape on the Spectrum and Amstrad. Just don't. It, it's On the Amstrad, you have to swap between disc sides to low levels. On the Amiga, you know, it is a multi-disc game. And we're on to the next level now. We throw the uh, knives at the balloons and try not to hit the lady in the middle. And occasionally Phoenix Freddy throws bombs onto the screen. This level's quite difficult and needs lots of practice. So yes, you need to play this on a disc system. Don't play it from tape, the multi-load. Uh, I think your Sinclair made it clear that the they gave this game a high rating, but only for the disc version. The multi-load was too fiddly for the Spectrum and certainly probably the Amstrad as well on tape. And this is a level, it's the same every time. So you can practice it, and you really do need to practice it to get the timings right. I'm just doing really badly here. I might actually hit something in a minute. Nice animation at the end. Phoenix Freddy sabotages the spinny thing. Right, over to the Amstrad, and you don't have many frames of animation to play with here. I do. I have got one balloon so far, though. That means I did better than the Amiga version. So the lady always uh, seems to rotate anti-clockwise. Spectrum and Amstrad version have the same tunes. And they seem to be adaptions of the 16-bit versions. I'm really annoyed I couldn't get the ST version working. I imagine it has the same AY tunes. And look how weird Finish Freddy looks on the Spectrum version here. Let alone on the C64 version. I'm um, keeping an eye on the left. Keep an eye on the left and see what he looks like. Because he appears to... Yeah, he's changed, got a weird choice of colours there. And he's 
back to normal colours there in the foreground. Next level is the tightrope level and you have to walk across the tightrope balancing very carefully as you go across and the trick is to look at the diagram at the top left hand side of the screen as opposed to paying any attention whatsoever to your character as he's walking across because the controls on him are will be opposite but if you're looking at the diagram if you move left your man moves correspondingly so it's much easier fairly straightforward level if you're too slow Phoenix Freddy again arrives on his jetpack cuts the tightrope and you fall to your doom quite an enjoyable level again a lot of consistency between the versions I find the Amiga version a little bit difficult but no it's quite fun if slightly short Over to the final level where you are human cannonball on the Amiga again. So what you have to do is get inside the cannon and when you're in there, you'll get some controls. You'll see how much gunpowder is in the cannon bottom left, you can't control that. You have to control where the target is, that's, tar that's at the top of the screen. And then you press fire as the cannon lowers to get your angle right. So you know you're going to compensate for the distance and... For the angle you're going to go at right. A little bit of a pause on the Amiga, it loads it all off the disc. I find that a bit disconcerting. Right, off we go. Am I going to fall short? I'm going to fall short. I fell short there. Probably should have brought the target in a bit closer. And you move the target. You've only got limited time to move that target because Fiendish Freddy is flying towards you on the uh, target kind of screen at the top there. You can see it on the outside. He's moving towards you. We've got a complete... Uh, Maximum uh, gunpowder there, so off we fly. It was very similar to the Amiga, but much slower in terms of animation. It's not a huge problem when you come to play. It's only noticeable when these things are put side by side. If you don't release yourself in time, Finish Freddy will come along. You put a cork in the top of your cannon, and the cannon will explode. Again, there's three levels on this, and you have a couple of lives in which to do it. So we're going down there. We've gone off the top of the kind of radar screen at the top there. Where are we? Where are we going to arrive? Oh, I've overshot. I've overshot horribly. And I'm going to land on the ground. No, I'm going to hit a post. And down I slide. On the spectrum there, not much gunpowder in there at all. Much faster. Am I going to do it? Am I going to do it? I reckon I probably will. And this is what happens when you succeed. Slight edit there when I got it right. You land in a big tra trampoline thing. Graphics on the C64 in this level really, really ugly. The blue flesh tones. It's like something's gone horribly wrong. Nice turn of speed, but just ugly. Why is the cannon the same colour as the background? Looks like it's been converted from CJ on the PC. So, end of the game now. We have not raised enough money. So, bad things are going to happen to the big top of fun. There's the big top of fun. waiting round on the Amiga with the disc access. And the big top comes down. And something rises out of the ground. And it's Freddy's Towers. He's built a tower block on there. Although I thought Phoenix Freddy was just uh, someone, the bad businessman hired in best not to question these things and that's the Amstrad version there and nice the end graphic also on the Amstrad so Fiendish Freddy's Big Top of Fun it's essentially like a sport events game but in a circus with a lot of very very dark humour if you've got a Spectrum or Amstrad you're going to have to play this on a disc based system do not 
attempt to play it on a tape system. This game was never re-released on budget as far as I'm aware, and I suspect with good reason in that the multi-load on tape is a complete nightmare. Of all the versions we've looked at, the Amiga version is the highlight. Really lovely graphics, they are absolutely lush. Real cartoon quality graphics on your Amiga. The ST version, from what I've seen of it, is very, very similar. But as I say, I, I really struggled to get it to run. I tried several versions, just couldn't get it working. On the 8 bits, I'm very personally attached to the Amstrad version. It's colourful, it's fun. Yes, it doesn't have as many frames of animation as the C64 version, but at least all the colours all the way through seem to be consistent. I don't know if there was a bug or something with the C64 version I've tried, or if that is how it actually is. I just found some of the colour choices on the 64 bizarre. But the game is still enormous fun, and it has much better animation than the Amstrad. Spectrum version is also fun, lacks the colour of the other two versions, and that actually does, in such a colourful game, take a little bit of the character out of the game. I usually get quite cross when people say, oh well, the Spectrum version doesn't have a lot of colour, it's not as good. On this one occasion, because Phoenix Freddy relies on being so colourful and so circus-like, yes, the Spectrum version does lose a little bit, but if you've got your specy up, yeah, it's certainly worth a go. Phoenix Freddy's Big Top of Fun is a unique game. Whether you've got an Amiga, a CPC, a C64 or a Spectrum, I highly recommend you play it, and probably also on the ST and PC, which I didn't try, as well. A unique take on the sport event genre of game. Very enjoyable. <laughs>